Hello there, and welcome to another episode of Daily Magic. My name is Slytherin Knight, and I am so happy you could join me. So, today's new daily quest is to cast 30 blue or black spells. Easy enough, and we have a couple options. We could do mono black, we could do demure fairies, or we could do our mono blue tempo. To be completely honest, I think we're going to do some tempo today. Feels like it's been, I mean, it's been longer since we've played the fairies deck than it has the mono blue. But I kind of, I kind of want to try it. I kind of want to try the mono blue. It's been a little, it's been a while since we've done just a mono color deck. And this one is, you know, not bad, all things considered. Um, like I said, it's been a little bit, a little bit since we've played this deck, but uh, nothing has changed. Nothing's changed since the last time. Still heavily, heavily reliant on Talarian Terror and Haughty Jin to be doing the most of our damage and having ways of keeping our opponent's field empty in the meantime. So yeah. Uh, Malcolm is an interesting card in that I don't know of the best way to use it because of its ability. Um, you, uh, what is it? Whenever it deals combat damage to the player, put a chorus chorus counter on it, draw a card, then discard. If there are four or more chorus counters on Malcolm, you may cast the discarded card without paying its mana cost. For the vast majority of our cards, that doesn't really work very well. I would see myself using that once you get to your fourth one. I mean, I can see it working, getting rid of cards that you don't need to help power up Hadi Jin. But once you get to that fourth one, I would say maybe getting rid of Thirst for Discovery, or Flow of Knowledge, or Hadi Jin, Tolarian Terror, to get them to the field for free. That's all I can really think of for using uh, Malcolm for. But yeah. With that out of the way, let's go ahead and give it a try. And yes, Spark is still present. Wonder how long it'll take them to get rid of that, to fix that. Wouldn't it would not surprise me if it takes until the new um, the new expansion comes out for Spark to go away. But anyway, first match against Vin. Not a terrible opener. Or like we can get rid of another Malcolm if we don't if we don't want to use Malcolm. Yeah, I kind of figured they would do that. That's fine. I don't think I could have... Discard two. Get rid of... This one and... The 
supposed to. We'll get rid of the spell pierce. And hmm, probably the fading hope. Absolute, that is one of the absolute best matches I've ever had with Mono Blue. That was beautiful, is what that was. And we got a third of the way there. Very nice. Ten of our thirty done. Cool. Into our next match. But yeah, that went. <laughs> that went a lot better than I was expecting it to. Great way. Great way to start off a new week. Uh, recording this on a Sunday. Yeah, it's one of the kind of the weird things with uh, recording these a few days in advance, or posting them a few days a, a few days after I record them, is um, the timing of things. We're just gonna call you. Uh, we're just gonna call you Joe. Um. No. from getting a flyer, that a, a two two flyer, so It's the better choice at the moment because it's a 5 5 versus a 4 4. It's got Ward 2, you can't cast a spell on it. Come in handy. 
I get it. Like, I get it. But it's a bit much, don't you think? Cards in hand than I usually have. There we go. You gotta be patient. Play the waiting game. That's the whole point of Mono Blue Tempo. You gotta, just gotta wait. Just gotta wait and good things will come. Seems like. Got 14 out of that one. Not too bad. Only six more re remaining. Should be able to finish things up with this match right here. Not too bad so far though. I'm I'm very pleased. I'm glad. I'm glad I decided to go with Mono Blue today. I don't. I don't believe the Fairy deck would have been performing this well. All right, Lethal Echidna. I like it. We've gotten lucky too. Going first. Going first every time is really beneficial with a Mono Blue. With a Mono Blue deck, it's very beneficial. Actually, yeah, I'll take that. I need to use my own, so... Depending on what they do here, we'll be, we can either make disappear... Actually, you know what? They're gonna 
burn that one. I was gonna block anyway to get rid of the Phoenix check, but I just didn't. Do that. Yeah. That would make a nice warfare for you. I don't think I need that right now. Another terror. Getting rid of that mechanized warfare was very beneficial. But unfortunately, we can't take a wait and see approach at this time. Not this time. room we would have been doing 10 damage to them curious to see what my next card would have been but yeah I mean, we'll take it we will take it and that should have been enough to get us our it was very nice three matches three wins we take that here <laughs> i did see we leveled up did we just we just got a card style for teething blade or tithing excuse me uh, enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a creature. And then you can craft it to make something else. This was used on us, like within the last 10 episodes, I think. This was this card was used by one of our opponents. What exactly does it do? Let's, let's look this up real quick. I don't remember what it crafts into. I probably spelled that wrong. Oh, no, I got it. Uh, craft with a creature for 5 mana becomes Consuming Sepulchre. At the beginning of your un upkeep, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. That's not great, especially, especially because you have to spend five mana to get to that. But, you know, whatever. <laughs> Either way, I do believe that that is going to do it for us today. If you enjoyed this episode, which I do sincerely hope you did, feel free to hit that thumbs up button down below. And if you happen to be new to the channel, hello, welcome, and consider subscribing to stay up to date for whenever new content is posted. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. I really, really do appreciate it. And I will see you all next time. <laughs>